Hari Om. Let us chant the first ten verses of Chapter Seven. Arjuna Uvacha. किम तद्ब्रह्म किम अध्यात्म किम कर्म पुरुषोत्तम अधिभूत च किम प्रोक्त अधिदैव किमुच्य अज्ञ कथम कौत्र देहेस्मुसूदन प्रयाण काले च कथम नियतात्म श्रीभगवाच अक्षर ब्रह्म परम स्वभाध्यात्मुच्य भूत भावोद्भवक विसर्गकर्म संगीत अधिभूत क्षरो भाव पुषाधिदत अोहमेवात्र देहेदेहृतांबर अंत काले चे स्मरन मुक्ता प्रयाति सम्भाति नास्त्र संशय यम यम वापि स्मरन भाव त्यजते कले वर तम तमे वैति कौंतेय सदा तद्भाव भाव तस्मासु कालेशु मनुस्मरुद्य मय्यमनोबुद्धि मे वैश्य संशय अभ्यासोगयुक्त चेतसा न्यगा परमं पुषं दिव्यं याति पाताचित कवि पुराणमुषासी अणोरणीय सनुस्मरेद्य सर्वस्थाचित आदिवर्ण तमस प्रयाण काले मनसा चल भक्तुक्त योग बल चुवोमे प्राणमावेश सतम परम पुष मुपैति दिव्यम Have a clarification on verse six, and then we'll move on to seven. ट्रेवलर थ्री 
Okay, when we are doing verse 5, I spoke about three types of people. One who has finished all the sadhana and attained enlightenment. The other one who has started the journey but has a way to, a length to cover. Those are the two types of travelers, I said. The third type of traveler is what the question is. What is or who is that third type of traveler? The third one is who is fully caught up in the world, going through the cycle of samsara again and again and again, who has not yet started the journey also. Able to follow? One person has attained moksha. Another person has started the journey, meaning somewhere down the line he is on the path. That's the, that is the question. Somewhere down the line he is on the path. The third person is not even started the, the journey, who is still caught up in the world. These are the three types of travelers we spoke about. What is the clarification? The second somewhere down, he is on the path somewhere. Yes. Yeah. What is the clarification in that? Uh, I want to talk a little bit elaborate on the second travel. Okay. So the first is understandable. The third is also understandable that he has not started the journey. So the, the second one, one is he is somewhere on the he is somewhere in the path. First thing is as you are today, you understand as you are today, <clears throat> my volume is low, is it? Correct, no? As you are today, as a, as a human being is today, the human being thinks there is everything all right with me. There is nothing that I need to do to correct myself. Everything is fine with me. I need to become a better materialistic person. Emotionally, I am all right. Clarity-wise, I am all right in life. I know what to do. I know what not to do. So this is one, one, one human being where we say this person haven't even started the journey because he doesn't even have that doubt that there is something wrong inside of him internally. And then the, and then the second journey, and then the second type of people. Who are the second type of people? They know as they are today, there is something wrong with them and they need to change. What is wrong with them? The worries, the anxieties, the trials, the sufferings, all these makes them understand that there is something wrong inside of them and they have to correct it. And they start correcting it. And they start, and they start the journey of what in Vedanta we call as the inner journey. And they start the inner journey. What is the inner journey? The inner journey is one of correction, self-correction. The first traveler wants to correct the world the second traveler wants to correct oneself. Confused individual means trying both at the same time. Yeah, that is a confused individual. As I am trying to correct myself, I want to correct the world also, sir. No, no, it doesn't happen. There are only two categories. Either you correct the outside or you correct the inside. Confused people try Try both because it is better. No, if 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 I stand corrected and the world around is also perfect, how nice it will be. Yeah. It's a very good hope, it's a very good dream, but in reality, it doesn't work like that. Therefore, one category, what we call as a spiritual person, understands that something in them has to be corrected, and they start the process of correction. That process of self-correction is called spiritual journey. That process of self-correction is called spiritual journey. And that spiritual journey has two levels. One is, I am impure, I have to become pure. That is one level of understanding. Even in self-correction, there are two stages. I am impure, I have to become pure is one level. The higher level is 
pure I am already, I need to recognize that. That is the second level. Somewhere down the line, people will be following these two. Are you able to follow? Somewhere between these two, people will be following. So at one level, people say, I am impure. I am disturbed. I am agitated. I need to become pure. That is one level of development. Very, very essential stage that everybody has to go through. You can't bypass this. You can't bypass this stage. Even though the second stage seems to be very appealing intellectually, looks like a shortcut. Looks like a shortcut for all problems. You can't actually do it. What is the second stage? Second stage of second stage is recognizing that you are pure already. Since you are pure already, you got to recognize your purity. So one person is trying to become pure. Another person is trying to recognize the intrinsic purity. Are you able to follow? So in the path, somewhere people will be. Which is what I said. In verse, verse. Are you able to follow the difference? Somewhere down the line means you, you cannot really pinpoint and say where they are. We are not talking in that sense. We say they belong to this category. What is this category? One, one set genuinely believe that they have to become pure. I am impure. Now I have to become pure. There's nothing wrong about it. That's the starting point of the journey. That's how it will, should start. That's how it will start. Having gone through this process and everything in the prescribed way, carefully follow having gone through the process of self-purification in the prescribed way, what is that prescribed way? Don't worry, we are going to see that in verse number 7. In the prescribed way, if you do it, not in the way that you, not in the way you feel like doing, not in the way that you pick up a book in the railway station or airport and start reading and start correcting, and start correcting yourself. Raj, yeah. Yeah, you don't pick up a book in the airport when you, have, when you don't have uh, you are early at the airport, checking and all is done, now what to do? You keep walking around, you see a bookstore, you go into a bookstore and then you see self-development, you pick up a book there and you start correcting yourself that is not the way it is done so self-correction in the prescribed way in the prescribed way means what it is we are going to see that person following the purification in the prescribed way matures to an understanding. What is that maturity? Because of the shravana, manana and all that, he matures to an understanding. What is understanding? It is not that I am going to become pure. Pure I am already and I am just not knowing it. At stage number one, it is a process of doing and attaining. And stage number two, it is a process of recognizing. Are you able to follow? In stage number one, there is a process of doing something. In stage number two, it's a process of simple recognition. We say simple recognition is not that simple. For the person who has done all the work and come to that point, it is simple. Not for everybody. Not for us. Are you able to follow? Therefore, those who are in the spiritual path belongs to these two categories. Somewhere they will be. Either they want to, either they will be doing something to purify themselves or wanting to recognize that they are pure already, which is what I said. The two types of the second category of travel. Somewhere in the path they are. Are you able to follow? Which formula you are following, that's what matters to you. Which formula means what are you convinced by? Are you convinced by impurity to purity or are you convinced by recognizing your purity? It, it's two different stages. That's all. When we say two different stages means at, at one stage you got to work to become pure and that working to become pure will give you a maturity and in that maturity alone you can understand that you are pure already. You can't straight away from impurity you can't straight away jump to this understanding and say I will simply recognize I am Impure, it won't work. Why? Because remember, Krodha, Lobha, Madha, Matsarya, Bhaya, all this will be there coming and 
all this are there hidden keeps coming back again and again and again disturb therefore this is what i said in that session you follow what i am saying so when the verse when verse type say those who think of me think of me will come to me and the spiritual person in travel the traveler two who is in stage one if he dies he will go to him directly if the person has not yet attained to moksha jivan mukti when he dies he will take up the appropriate conducive environment the question is okay i have started the journey of i have to become pure i am in that category of seeker what she is asking is i am in the category of seeker what is the category of seeker i am trying to become pure i have not yet realized that i am pure and i have not experienced all that so i am in the process of i am trying to become pure and what happens at the time of death for that person as krishna says in first number 5 he comes to me and he says comes to me doesn't mean he attain moksha comes to me means from where he left he will be able to continue he need not start he need not start all over again from where he left the journey he will he will continue come to me means the journey will continue don't take it literally that's why i said coming to me doesn't mean moksha here coming to me means the journey will the journey will continue nahi kalyana krit kasya durgatim tata gachati that is already said in the previous chapters very clear it's a further elaboration of that nahi kalyana krit kasya durgatim tata gachati so when it is said you will come to me it's not that you will attain moksha you will continue to be in the in the path the direction where you start you will continue from there you got to understand it like that because that's why we spent a lot of time talking about the last thought the resultant etc it is not a moksha it is not attained to moksha so coming to me doesn't mean he he, he attains moksha that is already that is already elaborated very clearly you follow what i am saying sir yeah yes arthar arthate jigyasu yes iva enna traveler type actually where does this arthah arthati jignyasu belong to in this they are they have not yet started the journey they are very good people but not started the spiritual journey the three types of the four types of devotees the four types of devotees previous chapter not in this chapter it is from the previous chapter she is referring to the previous chapter we told we spoke about the four types of devotees <clears throat> seeker of wealth seeker of solace seeker of intellectual entertainment yeah. jignyasu means a seeker of intellectual entertainment seeker of intellectual entertainment a gyani all are good people but gyani comes to me gyani means one who has started the traveler to but wow, so where do these three belong to they have they are not on the they are not on the path why they are not on the path because they are still looking for something from the from the world and using god as a means to get to that they are using god as a means for wealth they are using god as a means for emotional solace they are using god as a means for intellectual entertainment jignya sutta so intellectual entertainment god becomes a means for intellectual entertainment for intellectual entertainment you can go to a debate club discussion or you can study a philosophy also because that also entertains the so it can be a sheer intellectual entertainment or it can be a sheer emotional solace or it can be god as a medium for wealth all these three people believe that they need not do anything about themselves as they are they are right 
they belong to the first category as they are today they think they are right they only need they only need more wealth whenever mind is agitated they need they need peace and what some entertainment intellectual entertainment nice sir the, the logic is very good the reasoning is very good very nice to hear excellent and then do what nothing about it and then do what nothing about it are you able to follow jnani hmm? is traveler jnani can be or the person on the path or the one who has attained moksha jnani can be anybody it's a very liberal word you cannot fix the word and say this is what he is jnani is a very liberal word he can be a person who has attained moksha or or he can be a person who is in the path it can be anybody for all practical purposes we take it as though the person on the path because throughout the gita except the sthita pragna portion and a few other one or two verses here and there he never talks about the person who has attained that state because what is there to talk about that person who has reached that state one second who is he talking to you cannot talk about the waker to the dreamer how much ever you speak about the glory of the waker to the dreamer the dreamer can never understand therefore it's not about jnani and jnani here means a person in the in the path in a very liberal way the word jnani should be used in a very liberal way hmm verse number 7 7 no verse number 7 तस्मासर्पेशु कालेशु मामनुस्मरयुद्यच मय्यत्पितमनो बुद्धि मामे पैश्यस्य संशयः तस्मासर्पेशु कालेशु मामनुस्मरयुद्यच मय्यत्पितमनो बुद्धि मामे वैश्यस्य संशयः देयरफॉर एट ऑल टाइम्स रिमेंबर मी एंड फाइट विद माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन मी यू शैल विदाउट डाउट कम टू मी अलोन देयरफॉर एट ऑल टाइम्स रिमेंबर मी एंड फाइट विद माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन मी you shall without doubt come to me alone he is concluding kind of the smart therefore at all times remember me and fight what all he spoke about in the previous chapter in the previous verses he spoke about the transition etc and all that prayana kale all that he spoke about after speaking about prayana kale so the last thought is very important and and uh, and it is a summary of and, and and it is the resultant of all your thoughts that you do during the lifetime so arjuna will be thinking what now only krishna is understanding me what is understanding let us drop the fight and go and start thinking of god <laughs> because prayana kale last thought last thought all that therefore what arjuna will be naturally thinking he will be thinking now krishna is going to agree with me what is agreement let us stop the fight let them continue the fight we will move away let them do what they want to do we will we will move away and what i will do i will keep thinking of god and prepare myself for prayana kale this is what i am telling you from chapter 1 krishna the line implied here all these are implied here arjuna i said this is what i have been telling you from chapter 1 and he never expected this conclusion he never expected this conclusion what is the conclusion therefore at all times remember me correct that is uh, yuddhya cha and fight that twist he wasn't 
this twist Arjuna wasn't ready for. And how do you do that? With mind and intellect absorbed in me, you shall without doubt come to me. So, if you want your prayana kale, last thought to be remembering about God and all that, what you should do now? Don't waste time thinking about God now. Do what you ought to do now. Look at the confusion. Do what you ought to do now. In the context of Arjuna, it is fight. In the context of Arjuna, it is fight. Now, we should not take it as it is not, it is not fight. In our context, what does this mean? Whatever is expected out of us, in the wherever we are, in the circumstances we are, we need to do that. So, that's how we interpret. We will not say, okay, we are, where are we to go and start the fight? What fight, what fight means? Anything that you are supposed to do according to your position and role and circumstances. Whatever you are supposed to do there, whatever that needs to be done, do that. Means what? What is fight means? Fight means very simple. Do your duty, play your roles for pursuing me. That's what fight means. Again, I repeat, fight means do your duty, play your roles for what? For pursuing me. That is what is meant by therefore fight. Arjuna would have gotten a little bit depressed at this conclusion. Because this is, this is not what he wants to do. Somehow he is trying Krishna to somehow he is trying to convince Krishna to agree with him. And somehow Krishna is trying to convince Arjuna. We really don't know who is convincing whom. Huh? At the end of the day, we really don't know who is convinced. Who gets convinced? We don't know. So, what is the first thing? Remember me at all times and do what you are supposed to do now. That is the preparation for Prayana Kale. So there is no unique preparation for Prayana Kale. All that doesn't work out like that. Therefore, Tasmat Yudhyacha. Fight means do your duty, play your, play your roles. This Doing your duty, playing your role is Karma Yoga. This is what Karma Yoga is all about. What is Karma Yoga? Doing your, doing your duty, playing your role. Obviously for his sake. Obviously for pursuing him. That is implied there. Pursuing him, with the idea of pursuing him, you do your duty, then only it becomes Karma Yoga. Otherwise, it's a very ordinary act of attachment. That's all. It's not duty. It is a simple act of... It, it, it's an ordinary action arising out of attachment, which you may call it as duty. Which is not... It is not duty. Therefore, what? Do your duty. When you are doing the duty, which is an action, doing your duty, playing your role is an, is an action. For what are you doing that? That makes the difference. For what are you doing that? For my sake. For my sake means for the sake of moksha, liberation. Even for the sake of God, you can say. In the context of Bhakta, Bhakta will say, I am doing it for God's sakes. Ishwar Arpana. He will say, which is, that's also the right way of doing it only. And, uh, and Vedanta says that is, that's what we are also saying. It's not that we are saying something different from that. You are able to follow? Therefore, what is Karma Yoga? 
you are required to do that and you got to do it whether you like it or not you are required to do something why because you are in the role and the role requires you to do it whether you whether you like it or not if you are in the role of the husband whether you like it or not we have to do some things if you are in the role of the wife whether you like it or not we have to do a few things if you are in the role of the father whether you like it or not we have to do a few things if you are in the role of the mother whether you like a uh, worker working in an organization you got to do something whether you like it or not this understanding is called karma yoga here arjuna advises fight for arjuna it is fight but what is meant is universal message in that fight the message is universal what is the universal message your individual likes and dislikes have no relevance when it comes to your role your individual likes and dislikes have no relevance you got to you got to do it and when you do it you dedicate it to when you are doing it dedication happens dedicating it to what dedicating it to the highest dedicating it to the highest that is called therefore remember me and fight if the action is a pleasant one there is no problem we all will do it trouble comes only when the action becomes unpleasant isn't it when the action is pleasant we don't need krishna we ourselves will do it the the moment it becomes unpleasant the tendency is to the unpleasantness disturbs and because of the disturbance what ought to be done is drop fight in in the context of arjuna fighting okay let us assume let us assume arjuna was 60 year old in the battlefield you know arjuna was not a teenager in the battlefield you know at least this much story we know isn't it when he came into the battlefield he was already a grandfather when arjuna came into the battlefield he was already a grandfather so let us assume that he is he is 60 hmm? and in 60 years he has fought so many battles and all those battles were pleasant battles he never had a doubt about those battles because it was all very pleasant now this battle is unpleasant <laughs> what is the difference between that battle and this battle in chapter 1 he said it very clearly swajana mahave my people krishna that's all my people rules change the moment mind has come dharma adharma changes the moment for my people the whole rules are different for those who are outside the circle of mindness the very rules are different eh? that's how an ignorant person works that's how an ajnani works here it is why this battle became unpleasant it's not that the very first battle itself was unpleasant he is dhananjaya dhananjaya means he has fought many battles just as we also keep doing our duties as long as it was as long as it is pleasant now what has happened this is an unpleasant battle battle is not unpleasant something that arjuna did made it unpleasant what did arjuna do that he made it unpleasant he personalized it and said mine swajanam swajanam ahave he says in chapter 1 how can i kill my own people krishna killing others is very pleasant but killing my own people is very very unpleasant how can i how can i do that so what has happened here 
action is a pleasant one there is no problem the same action when it becomes unpleasant the person drops karma yoga comes and says it's your duty whether you like it or not it's your duty and whether you like it or not you got to you got to do it you got to do it the smart you the acha therefore fight are you okay till now and then he used a beautiful word anusmara and fight there yeah, i am going word by word then he says therefore fight and then there is an adjective therefore remember me and fight and then the third condition therefore remember me at all times and fight so put it like this what is the conclusion fight remembering me at all times arjuna will be thinking again you went back to chapter 2 krishna no again you are going back to the same thing again and again and again you, you pretend as though you are in agreement with me and finally come back to your own your own conclusions are you able to follow therefore fight when you do study you should study like that wise man will know this i am telling the others clear yeah. clear yeah. wise man manohar knows how to do all this therefore fight second is remember me and fight third one is at all times so what is this sarveshu kaleshu i'll come to that later anusmara smara means remember and what is that prefix anu means anu doesn't mean small atom anu means the sanskrit word anu what is anusmara anu doesn't mean remember me little bit small atom what is anu anu means remember me as taught in the shastra that's what anusmara means remember me and how you should remember as it was taught by the shastra for this anusmara adi shankaracharya writes shastra sahitam he says shastra sahitam means as guided as was told to you by the by the shastra so anusmara remember sarveshu kaleshu sarveshu kaleshu means at all times sarveshu kaleshu implies at at all times what is at all times mean morning noon and night all four seasons from birth to death what is all times mean all times here doesn't refer to the chronological time all times here refers to in and through the various roles that you play at different periods in time remember me sarveshu kaleshu therefore the first statement the smart sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha beautiful conclusion then the second statement mai arpita mano buddhi ma meva eshyasi asamshaya is it okay till now remember me fight fight means play your play your role for what for my sake at all times means all the various roles that you got to play at various times the situations will require you to play various roles at all, at all times whatever situation that role asks you to perform do that who has taught you all that who has taught you all that the shastra has taught you all that therefore do your duty following the vedanta shastra means knowledge vedanta as was taught to you if you do that what happens to you prayana kale will be very smooth 
prayana kale will be very smooth prayana kale will not take anything away from you and it will take you to the and it will make sure that you will continue from where you where you leave actually you are not leaving anything for all practical purposes you are not leaving anything because you want to continue the journey and this body and this environment has become redundant therefore what you are doing you are leaving the useless and you are going to take the useful are you able to follow so prayana kale is not a, is not a frightening thing what is happening in prayana kale you are leaving the useless and taking the useful what is useless the current body the current environment all this has become useless redundant in your journey so what happens the very path simply takes you to the next ma manusmara tasmat sarveshu kaleshu doing what yudhya yudhya means fight and it's not the literal fight fight refers to your roles roles means duties obligations responsibilities you perform your roles means do your duties responsibilities obligations for what connected to the connected to anusmara remembering me remembering me what is remembering me remembering the goal remembering me means remembering the goal it is not remembering the form of the lord it is not remembering the form of the lord or the form of the lord you should understand it as a symbolic representation of the idea then it works it's not simply remembering the form of krishna or the form of rama or the form of krishna or the form of ganesha you can remember the form it's not that it is wrong to remember the form when you remember the form you understand the form the idol reminds you of the ideal the form the idol reminds you of the ideal then you are on the right path so remembering me doesn't mean remembering god in a in a specific form or it is not wrong to see god in that specific form as long as you understand it as as long as you understand it as symbolic are you able to follow so remember god with the form it is perfectly all right it's not wrong at all but what you should not do do not restrict divinity to do not restrict divinity to that form trouble comes when you restrict divinity to to that form and when you restrict divinity to that form what will happen okay you have an idol of krishna you have an idol of krishna and keep doing puja worshiping aarti every day you keep doing everything all that is fine you can notice any other idol of krishna will not give you that the other the other, there may be other idols of krishna and those idols of krishna will not give you that same divine feeling are you able to follow why because attachment to my idol krishna is only restricted to this two inch krishna is restricted to this 2 inch idol krishna is restricted to that 3 inch idol krishna is restricted only to okay sir to that extent i agree what wherever there is krishna there is divine but suddenly if rama is there what happens if allah is there what happens rama okay sir we can so allah is enemy enemy god he is yeah. allah is enemy god ah are you able to follow so you use a form and you can pour your emotion towards the deity towards that form what will happen is you will get so attached to that form that the divine will be missed 
that is not remembering me that is not remembering me therefore vedanta says whenever you use the idol you tell yourself this idol represents the ideal that is bhakti yoga in bhakti yoga you use the idol to remember the ideal are you following so here what people do when they remember a form they get attached to a form this is why they say wherever i go i felt like i did puja only if i do puja to my idol if i go and do puja to some other deity in some other temple i didn't feel like doing i didn't felt like the divine didn't come at all sir previously what was happening to your krishna idol there was no divinity it was a simple ordinary in one word it's a very simple ordinary attachment it's a very simple ordinary attachment that's of nothing much so when he says here remember the remembrance here has a totally different totally different connotation totally different meaning therefore at all times remember me and fight that is the first statement the second statement says mai arpita mano buddhi mameveshyasi asamshayah asamshayah samshayam is doubt asamshayah is without doubt you need not have any doubt at all about this what if you fight you will come to me if you don't fight if you don't fight don't worry you will not come to me asamshayah without doubt you will come to me when you will come to me if you do fight and we understood what fight implies correct we have understood what is uh, and uh, and we have understood what fight means asamshayah doubtless the samshayam is the opposite of shraddha samshayam is the opposite of shraddha go on go on doubting 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 what is doubting even before attempting the question is will it work sir as the samshayam are you follow what is samshaya the person will not even make an attempt even be, even before making an attempt even before making an effort the mind will ask this question what is the question are you sure it will work are you sure it will work kandipa you are asking me to somebody says go to this temple do this puja it will work that fellow will go for a second opinion on that isn't it that fellow told me i should go to the temple and i should do this puja are you sure according to vedanta what vedanta says about all this sir will it work so you say vedanta also will not work prayer also will not work why because there is there is samshayam and what is samshayam here what is samshayam here even before attempting even before making an effort you want to know whether you want to know whether it will work or not and who can guarantee whether it will work or not unless you make the effort sir will follow will it work or not if somebody comes and asks okay you have put me in the school will i pass the child is asking you you have put me in the school very good will i pass what will be your answer what will be your answer i don't know whether you will pass unless you go through if you go through all that is prescribed in the school asamshayam there is no doubt you will pass it's exactly like that are you follow asamshayam if you go through the prescribed if you if you go through all that is prescribed in the school you will pass but the child asks okay if i go through all the prescribed thing what is the guarantee that i will pass 
This is called samshayam. This is called samshayam. Samshayatma pranashyati, he says. Samshayatma pranashyati, samshayatma vinashyati. He, he gets destroyed. Why? Because this person will not do what ought to be done. Go on expressing doubt. What is the doubt? Guarantee for the result even before doing. That is samshay. Shraddha is doing it rightly and having the conviction that result will come. That is Shraddha. Are you able to follow the difference? Samshayam means not doing anything at all and asking for guarantee for the result. Sir, if you, if, you, if you are very sure, then I will do. If you yourself is not sure, then wasted effort, no sir. Wasted energy, no. Neha vikramana shosti pratyavayo navidyate svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat. In the verse, sir. Does anybody remember? Verse number 40, chapter 2. Yeah. That's why the formula verses, I keep repeating. Every second class, third class, I keep repeating the formula verses. So, there is no such thing called effort going waste at all, Arjuna. That he said already in verse number 40, chapter 2. Therefore, samshayam need not be there at all. Samshayam need not come at all. And what is samshayam? Samshayam is a doubt. It doesn't take you anywhere. Asamshaya, without doubt. Yes, yes, see, you will come. You will come to me without doubt. He is not predicting the future. He is only explaining the logical consequence. Are you able to follow? He is not, he is not predicting anything. He is not guaranteeing anything. He is not predicting anything. He is only saying, if you do in the prescribed way, what is the logical consequence? Without doubt, you will get it. That's why we say Bhagavad Gita is rational, scientific. But we think, no, no, sir, but God means powerful God. No. He should be able to give it even without, even without me doing it also, God should give. No. Then only God is powerful. God says that is Akrama. God says that is Akrama. Adharma it is. Adharma, Akrama. Akrama means anything that goes outside the boundary of the law will not happen. You may dream for it. You may hope for it. You may hallucinate about it. In reality, it won't. For it is Akrama, it is Adharma. Krama means logical sequence. Akrama means you break the sequence. What is breaking the sequence? I go to the school. Before I go to the school, I go to temple. On the way to the school, I go to temple. On the way back from school, I go to temple and don't study at all. <laughs> and I go to exams. And I'll become rank holder. Huh? Going to temple for 365 days is a waste, sir. Krishna will say, what you did is Akrama. <laughs> huh? Raj, Purida. <laughs> he will say, what you did is Akrama. Why? Because you didn't follow the prescribed logical sequence. You didn't follow that. By not, you, you don't follow that. And how can you expect that to happen? Samshayam. Samshayam is the opposite, uh, Shraddha is the opposite of Samshayam. Shraddha is the opposite of Samshayam. And chapter 4, Shraddha van labate jnanam. Remember that. Shraddha van labate jnanam. The person of Shraddha gains knowledge. The person of Shraddha gains knowledge. What is Shraddha? If I follow the prescribed method, it will happen. So I need not worry about whether it will happen or not. I need to worry and make sure whether I am following it 
in the prescribed manner. Who prescribes Shastra, Vedanta, the Guru, the textbook prescribes. So as you as you are told, but sir, in case if the prescription is wrong, <laughs> the doctors give wrong prescription, no, sometimes. It is possible, no, sir. Everybody can make a mistake, no, sir. Correct. Everybody can make a mistake. So it means Shastra also can make a mistake. Shastra is not a human product to make a mistake. It is only that which is of human product makes mistakes. And Shastra is not a product of human being. It's revealed. That which is revealed is perfect. That which is made by a human being can be imperfect. Therefore, you need not have some shame at all. That's how a spiritual seeker convinces oneself. I don't know whether I am talking to you or not. I am talking to myself, I think. Convincing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, convincing. Yeah. Convincing myself, I am doing, I think. Isn't it? Maybe you are all just an audience for my self-affirmation. Uh, yeah, for me to repeat myself, you are all standing and watching and say, ah, you are doing a good job, sir. <laughs> you are doing a very good job. Very good, very good. Are you able to follow? The Shraddha comes from what? Can the prescription go wrong? That's where Samshaya comes. Could it be a wrong prescription? Is, is there a possibility that the prescription can go wrong? Because everybody's prone to mistakes, no sir? That's the logic, correct? It's the correct logic. And it's the right question to ask. But then you should understand the answer also. What is the answer? All that is made, all that is made by a human being has the possibility of correction, betterment, etc. That which is revealed, that which was there ever is perfect in itself. That's why we say Shastra is a revealed scriptures. When the Old Testament says it is revealed, Shastra means that which is revealed. It's not somebody sat and wrote one day. It's not somebody sat and wrote and we are following that. Yeah. Somebody sat and wrote the constitution. Amendment after amendment we have to go through, isn't it? Because what is the difference between Independence Day and Republic Day? <laughs> yeah, there is an Independence Day and then there is a Republic Day also, no? What is the difference between the two? People don't know the difference at all. I don't know how many people know the difference. Eh? <laughs> what is the difference between Independence Day and Republic Day? Both are government holidays, sir. <laughs> yeah, both are government holidays, that's all. And it should not come on a Sunday. That's all. All that we want is what? It should not come on a Sunday. And it's a government holiday. What is the difference? Republic Day is where the constitution got the constitution got finalized. What is the constitution? 10-15 people sat and put it together. And then in the last 75 years, 175 amendments have passed. Similarly, does Shastra also go through it? Are you able to follow? Punit. Does Shastra also need to go through amendments like that? No. Why? Because they are revealed. That which was there already, they just, they just saw it. Revealed means what? It was already there. A few saw it. Gravity was there. Newton saw it. It's revealed. He it, is not the creator. So it, it, you cannot say Newton is the creator of gravity. New, gravity got revealed to Newton, correct? Mm -hmm. Similarly, the Shastra is revealed, not, not made. Therefore, you need not worry about the prescription going wrong at all. Asamshayaha Arjuna. There is no need to have a doubt. All that you got to do is what? Simply, simply follow. 
simply cannot be done asamshaya samshaya comes and samshaya keeps bringing in the 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 doubt therefore another beautiful word that he uses is asamshaya doubtless you will come to me when when you do your duty remembering me at all times kama he brings in another beautiful practical thing what is the beautiful practical thing that he comes he puts a kama there then he says mai arpita mano buddhi mind and intellect should be done as an arpana to me arpita means that which that which is offered that which is offered it's offered mai arpita mano buddhi what you should offer you should offer your mind and you should offer your intellect in short he is saying offer all that you have to me that's all in short what he is saying don't keep anything to you all that you have offer offer it to me samshayam will come then what will happen to me sir ellathu ungulta kutta what will what will happen to me you will become me are you able to follow all that you have offer it to me paul subramaniam then what will happen to me then what will happen to me you will become you will become me what else you want what more you want so what is this mai arpita mano buddhi he means what is this arpita of manas and buddhi buddhi is in relation to understanding buddhi is in relation to knowledge understanding fixation direction mind as in thoughts emotions so when he says offer the offer the mind mind as in thoughts emotions intellect as in knowledge understanding direction guiding etc so when you offer your mind and when you are offering your intellect what does it mean while you are performing your obligatory duties while you are performing your roles that you ought to perform mind surrenders to the self surrendering mean emotions are surrender means surrender is a very poetic expression of constant thinking surrendering here means you should understand throughout the gita he keeps saying surrender 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 what is surrender means surrender means ananya chinta now the thoughts are thinking about so many things the thoughts are going all over the world thinking about so many things sometimes meaningful sometimes meaningless sometimes useful sometimes useless sometimes simply going for no reason why it is why it is going some it simply goes wanders surrendering means the wandering has stopped what is surrendering means the wandering stops that is surrender and what is intellect what is buddhi here guiding directing guiding directing what wherever a misunderstanding arises intellect brings in the knowledge and guides it rightly wherever misunderstanding arises intellect comes in and and guides it correctly what is the misunderstanding when you are performing your role you can develop a misunderstanding what is a misunderstanding i am the doer i am indispensable i am very important without me 
the whole thing will collapse all this can come in are you able to follow knowledge immediately intellect comes in and says you got to you got to do it as your duty without kartritva no doer shape no indispensability notion this is intellect guiding you to reach the goal and don't worry throughout the bhagavad gita he keeps talking about this discipline every chapter he will talk about this discipline at least 5 6 verses every chapter longer chapter na 15 20 times shorter chapter na 5 6 times but the prescription doesn't change but the prescription doesn't doesn't change mai arpita mano buddhi and you can discuss this mai arpita mano buddhi any number of any number of times beautiful is that prescription so what is this surrendering the mind means surrendering the mind means the thoughts don't go all over the place one surrendering means you don't have a fixed time for god we have a fixed time for god correct that fixed time for god is called a prayer correct huh? you have a fixed time for god you give an appointment to god isn't it what is appointment time that you give to god morning 7 to 7:30 evening 6 to 6:30 yeah the appointment that you give to god is called prayer mano har the appointment that you give to god is called prayer rest of the time the chinta is going <laughs> rest of the time the thoughts are going elsewhere so what is surrendering to the mind means surrendering to the mind is like tampura remember that classical musician example the shruti the tampura shruti at the background that is surrendering that is surrendering it's a training you train yourself it, it comes through it comes through training the extraordinary example for that swami ji gives is the tampura shruti the shruti in the classical musician as he is anchored to that as he has surrendered to the shruti he goes through the various ragas and talas he says as he is anchored to that and that anchoring is called surrendering surrendering doesn't mean falling at the feet surrendering doesn't mean doing sashtang namaskar that, that doesn't mean surrender you can fall at the feet and still ego become very red isn't it isa was upanishad says the spiritual ego is more binding blinding than others people in the world are in darkness people in the spiritual path are in blinding darkness andam tamaha pravishanti why because what is the what is the ego of the spiritual person the ego of a spiritual person is he become an, he becomes an all knower the first characteristic feature of a spiritual person is what he will not say he will not know <coughs> how to say i don't know he will know everything you ask him about science he will talk about science you talk about philosophy he will talk about philosophy you talk about politics he will talk about politics you will talk about ghosts and spirits he will talk about ghost and spirit also he will talk are you able to follow blinding darkness isa vasya calls this people as they are in blinding darkness that's why he will give a legal opinion 
he will give a medical opinion yeah. he, he he will give all under all subject on this planet he will give an opinion that person is in blinding darkness and who is this person those who come to the spiritual path they think they are followers see i didn't say that sir god speaks through me <laughs> god will speak to that person directly if god wants to speak god will speak to that person directly god doesn't need a medium yeah in the initial stages you need a medium no the boy meets the girl falls in love the girl meets the boy falls in love but they can't say it directly they need a they need a medium invariably the other the invariably the other person becomes a medium god doesn't require any mediums like that if god wants to speak to you directly god will speak to you directly why god has to speak to you through me punith it's not needed god will speak to you directly blinding darkness is what i am the medium through which god speaks to the world why because i am slightly superior to you all i am slightly better than you you are all in darkness you are all attached involved in the world who am i i am a slightly intellect comes and says that is called mai arpita mano buddhi intellect come, whenever this whenever this comes intellect gives a till it gives one knock at the head and say prasad மெட்ராஸ் பாஷையில சொல்லணும்னா கொஞ்சம் அடங்கு இட் வில் சே கொஞ்சம் அடங்குப்பா சே தட் யூ டோன்ட் நோ ஆல்சோ சே ஐ டோன்ட் நோ ஆல்சோ இல்லையா சே மெடிக்கல் ஒப்பீனியா கோ டு அ டாக்டர் இஃப் யூ சம்படி ஆஸ்க் ஃபார் அ மெடிக்கல் அட்வைஸ் கோ டு அ டாக்டர் இஃப் சம் மெடிக்கல்னா கோ டு அ லாயர் டோன்ட் கிவ் அட்வைசஸ் ஆன் ஆன் ஆல் சப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் ஆன் த பிளானட் ஆஸ் தோ யூ ஆர் அன் எக்ஸ்பர்ட் இன் ஆல் சப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் this is called kartrutva ahankara intellect guiding means what whenever kartrutva comes are you able to follow whenever kartrutva comes wherever ahankara comes intellect intellect wakes up not that intellect wakes up intellect is alert to give a knock that alertness of the intellect that alertness of the intellect to give a knock and say wait this practice is called mai arpita mano buddhi when you are doing this what will happen to you when you are doing this what will happen to you without doubt without doubt you will come to me tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yudhya cha mai arpita mano buddhihi maam eva eshyasi asamshayah samshayah means without without doubt you will you will come by doing this with your mind and intellect set on the self you will undoubtedly reach the self reaching the self is a logical consequence that's all nobody needs to there is no um, there is no prediction here he is not predicting something he is not promising something he is only saying is a logical conclusion what is the, it will be the logical conclusion what is the logical conclusion follow the prescribed course okay what is the prescribed course play your role don't allow the mind to wander play your role do not allow the mind to wander if you have to make sure not if you have to ensure that your mind doesn't wander the mind needs a fixation the fixated mind will not wander so who becomes a fixation i become the fixation i means the goal the idol can be anything it can be an idol also it's not wrong you will have a fixation and what is intellect means what is intellect 
intellect is that which is alert. What is alertness? When you are doing all the right things, a garva can come, an ahankara can come. A garva, a ahankara. What is that garva ahankara? That I am doing everything rightly. The alert intellect says, Kartritva has entered. Kartritva has entered. Doership has entered. And this doership is going to spoil everything. So it's alert. This is called intellect set on the self. Mind has surrendered. Intellect is set on the self. You are doing your roles perfectly. Role play, I am not elaborating at all because we have been discussing it for two, three weeks now. Yeah. Play your role in all sentence water in that book. In that book, Thesis on God, play your role is only four sentences. Three classes went on that. Play your. So, since, uh, since we are discussing that recently, I am not elaborating. What is role means? What is a summary? Role means what? You enter the stage, play the role and leave. So, role implies what? Exit. Sorry. Entry and exit. First thing, role means entry and exit. Second, role means you are not that. Play the role like, act like Ramana. You will not go and tell Lord Rama, Ayodhya's prince, act like Rama. Correct? When you say play your role means, what is the second condition? You are? You are not that. Three. You can effectively play the role when you remember your original identity. Is a role play. It's very simple. First thing, role playing is what you en you enter the stage, play the role, and exit. You got to enter, play, exit. Second, role means you are not that. That's very important. Role playing means you have to understand you are not that. If you say I am that, then it is no more. Then it is no more a role. When you are playing like Ravana on the stage, you will not say I am Ravana, correct? In fact, you may do better than the original Ravana. Why you may do better than the original Ravana? The original Ravana didn't have time for rehearsals, practices. You have practiced it 1,000 times. Since you have practiced it 1,000 times, the original Ravana will look, wow, what a... Yeah. But still in the deepest core, you understand what? You are not Ravana. Why? Because you, you understand your original... You understand your original identity. This is role play. Doing your duties, obligations. This is in relation to the action. As you are doing actions like this, mind has a fixation. Therefore, it doesn't wander. Intellect is alert. Intellect is alert. Wherever it slips, wherever the, wherever the wrong emotions, distracting emotions surfaces, intellect becomes alert and educates. Carefully follow. Intellect becomes alert and educates. In that education, the distracting emotion die away naturally. Intellect doesn't suffocate. Intellect doesn't stifle. Because if it is suffocating, if it is stifling, it will come back. So whenever these distracting emotion surfaces, what intellect will do? What is the role of the intellect here? Educate. It will educate. In that education, the distracting emotions gradually dies away. If you are doing all this, what will happen? Without doubt, you will come to me. Now read the verse. Therefore, at all times, remember me 
and fight with mind and intellect absorbed in me you shall without doubt come to me alone very beautiful conclusion this is verse number 7 next week we'll continue from verse number 8 onwards there are clarifications that also i'll take it up in the next uh, next sessions we'll take up the clarification and then we move on to verse number 8